like Jesus is to be like Jesus. The only strong desire of my heart is to be more holy. Is to be more holy. The only one. Jesus, the only strong desire of my heart is to be more holy, is to be more holy. Many times I've tried and true to live a life of truth and You and less 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, glorious Lord, the eternal God, everlasting King, we thank you for bringing us this far in the year 2018. And Lord, as the year is very fast, rolling through into eternity, we pray, Lord, that you will help us that we will be better prepared for eternity in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will speak to our hearts and bless us. Lord, we pray that as we listen to your word today, it will be blessings unto our soul. It will prepare us for a better life in you, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. As you can tell from the beginning of the service today, the Lord himself has been leading us. And I pray that his spirit will fill us the more in Jesus' name. No one coming here today will live the same way in the name of Jesus. Everything you have desired in your life from the beginning of the year, even before this year, I am trusting and believing God that your hour of answer has come in Jesus' name. At this time, we are going to listen to the message on the subject of the grace to grow. The grace to grow. And the Bible tells us in the book of Titus chapter 2, looking at it from verse 11, that for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he, might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now, look at that passage of the scripture. The Bible says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. That means that grace is available to everybody, old and young. And do I tell you this, the grace is also available to believers and unbelievers. It now depends on what you do with that grace. Whether you receive it or you reject it. Whether you make use of it or you ignore it. I pray the grace will work for us in Jesus' name. So, the grace to come alive 
is available. The grace to grow after we have come alive is also available. The grace to increase, the grace to mature, the grace to develop, the grace to progress, to, the grace to be better in every area of our life is available. It will come to you in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2, as newborn babes. Another um, translation says, like newborn babes. So, KJV says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world, that ye may grow thereby. Now, the Bible is saying, what do you do? You desire that grace that can make you grow. That grace that can make you special. That grace that can make you unique. That grace that can make you come up. That grace that can make you acceptable unto God. Like a new child, desire the sincere milk of the world. That means, as we talk about the grace of God, you are not talking about the grace unto lasciviousness. You are not talking about the grace to sin. You are not talking about the grace for selfish purposes, but the grace that is entrenched in the word of God, that is through the word of God, the grace that will make you to live for the glory of the name of the Lord as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world. Now, the Bible is very, very clear when it says the sincere milk of the world because it is possible that some people are looking for the world that is not sincere, the world that is not real. They're looking for something that is fake, something that will not be able to stand the test of time. And so it says the sincere milk, the real milk of the world that nourishes your soul, spirit, and body. The real milk of the world that changes you from who you are to who you ought to be. The real milk of the world that prepares you for eternity in glory. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It says, but grow in grace. You will grow. I will grow. All of us together will grow in Jesus' name. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grow in grace, grow in grace, grow in grace. Understand the grace of God that brings salvation. If you say you have the grace and you are not yet saved, that is not the grace of God. If you say you have the grace and you are not free from sin, that is not the grace of God. If you say you have the grace and your life today is still like your life in the past, that is not the grace of God. The grace of God that brings salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is freedom. Salvation is liberty. Liberty to serve the Lord. Liberty to live for God. Liberty to do the will of the Lord. Liberty. Liberty to be free from all the entanglements of the world. Liberty to be free from the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. I told you the other time that this grace is a teaching grace. Uh, and uh, it helps us to deny all ungodliness and that grace is there for us in Jesus name. And so it says that kind of grace that picked you up from the merry clay that brought you out of the mary clay, that places your feet upon the solid rock, that grace that is drawing you nearer and closer unto God, the Bible is saying that grace, that grace that is from the word of God, according to the will of God, by the power of the law, that grace grow in it. Grow in it. Grow in it. And do I tell you something? It takes more power to get an engine started than to keep an engine running. This is what I'm saying. It takes special grace, unique grace, supernatural grace to deliver you from the power of darkness and rescue you from the pangs of wickedness than the grace you need to continue on a daily basis. Am I communicating? Now that you are saved, now that you are a child of God, 
Now that you have the word of God, now that you know what it means to live for God, because in the past you were in darkness, now you are in the light. In the past, you were an enemy of God, but now you are a friend of God. In the past, you are ignorant of the judgment of sin, but now you are knowledgeable of the reward of righteousness. And so, the grace of God that brought salvation, understand, that bringeth salvation, that always brings salvation, has appeared unto all men, and that grace is what now you and I need to grow in. I need a better one. And somebody here will grow. By the power of God, you will grow. For the glory of God, you will grow. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The knowledge of God that will make you to know that salvation means Freedom from sin, not just the past sin alone, but future sin. You are free from them completely. Not just that people will say, well, once you are born again, you are now a child of God. Now you have the liberty to do anything and everything, and you remain a child of God. Eternal security. There is nothing eternal in that security. Eternal security is only secured in righteousness, in holiness, in purity and uprightness. For the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says no. God forbid. God forbid. How can we that have been set free from sin, delivered from sin, liberated from sin, be entangled by sin again? That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And so the grace is there for you to grow. The grace is there for me to grow. And we all will grow in Jesus' name. Growth actually is the characteristics of living things. It was Dr. late Dr. Miles Monroe that says every living thing grow. And so, if you are actually alive in Christ Jesus, you will grow. When you see a member of the church that says, I am saved, that says, I am born again, that says, I am washed by the blood of Jesus, and they are still doing things like the people in the world. It's an indication that although they profess being born again, but in reality, the life of God is not in them. They are still dead in sin and trespasses. They are not yet dead to sin and trespasses. So you need to understand it is possible to be religious. It is possible to be active in the church, but still dead in sin. Stuck sinner. Dead sinner. Terrible sinner. And as this year is rolling into eternity, I pray your transgressions will roll into eternity. Your iniquities will roll into eternity. All the weaknesses in your life spiritually, everything will roll away in Jesus' name. We are looking at three points. Number one, the passion for growing grace. The passion for growing grace. Number two, persistence grace for growth. The persistent grace for growth. And then, point number three, the products of growing grace. The product of growing grace. The passion, understand, the duty and the responsibility for you to grow. At the initial time, lies in the hands of your parents as a little child, as a little child, desiring the sincere milk of the world when a child is born. The child, the first thing the child cries uh, does is what is the first thing a child does when he is born? The child cries. The child cries for attention. The child cries for food. And so the mother of the child, the nurse, the doctor, they take care of the need of the child. 
From then going forward, the parents of the child fears the child from time to time. And according to what the nurses have told us, for new babies, every two hours the child gets fed. Amen? But then the time comes that that same child does not eat every two hours anymore. Maybe it becomes four hours. And then a time comes that that same child does not eat just like that anymore. He, becomes, he begins to eat maybe three times in a day. Three times in a day. And the parents are still responsible what to eat for breakfast, what to eat for lunch, what to eat for dinner. The parents are responsible. But a time will come that the parent, the father, the mother will no more cook for that child. The child will now need to take care of himself. You will take care of yourself. I say you will take care of yourself. The child knows when I'm hungry. What I want to eat. Where do I go to eat? It's no more the father, the mother that to be deciding. Okay, this is what you're going to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner anymore. And at this point of time in your life, that the duty and the responsibility of growth is now in your hand, the grace to be able to do it, God has made it available. The provision, the resources are all there for you, and you will make use of them in Jesus' name. So then, you have to passionately desire to grow. Desire to grow. Many years back, when I gave my life to Christ Jesus, shortly after that, I saw the need for self-development. I saw the need for growth. The thirst and the hunger was there in me. And I saw people that would stand and teach the word of God. And I saw people that would stand and preach the word of God. And then I saw people that were doing different things. And I desire to be like them. Understand? Understand? At that point in time, I've not seen God. I don't know as much as I know now. What I knew were the people I saw around me. And I saw good things about them. And I desire good things. And somebody here will desire good things. And you will grow in Jesus' name. And when I see the way and the specialty with which the word of God was being taught, I felt, how can I be like these people? Number one, get nearer them. Get closer to them. Number two, try to know what are they doing that is helping them to be the way they are. Ah, and then begin to learn from all those and then you see the way they talk and that is the way children grow too. You don't sit down and say, uh, child, say A, B, C, daddy. No, that's not what you do. As you keep on saying daddy every day, one day the child will say, da, da, dad. And then eventually the child will end up saying, Daddy. And then you say mommy. Eventually the child will end up saying mommy. And then you, 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 you do some things. The child is watching you, looking at you. The normal legitimate thing. I remember years back when our son was still very young. And then I will climb to take care of some things. I'll do things. One day I didn't know the little small child was watching and observing everything. And one day he was pulling things together to climb. Praise the Lord. Thank God we were around to quickly hear. And so you learn by observation. That is how we grow. I have had some people say, I'm not growing. I'm not growing. Maybe you are blind. Maybe you are not looking. Maybe you are not really interested in growing. Maybe you are only looking for who to blame for your failure and disappointment. If you really want to grow, you know what you are desiring. And then you look for people if you want to grow in the area of prayer. Who do you look for? You look for praying people. If you want to grow in the area of humility, who do you look for? 
You look for people that are humble, meek, gentle, and lowly. You look for them, you look at them, and then you get nearer them. Tell me the secret of your life. You are the one desiring. You are the one passionate for that kind of life when you see people that teach very well as good teachers. And they teach in such a way that they get the attention of the people and they carry the people along and they, and they minister to people. You, you, you observe them. You observe them. And now you see people that are able to preach. Maybe you don't pay attention. Most preachers that you see, they are always mimicking or imitating some preacher somewhere. It depends on who you watch the most. It depends on who you listen to the most. Whether you like it or not, naturally you see yourself doing things just the way that individual is doing things. And so, if you really want to grow, you will decide who is going to be my mentor. And somebody here will grow. You know, there are people that uh, I have met that we say, we know one thing about deeper life. They are very serious with holiness. And there are some of you, you belong to this church, that church, that church before. But because of your desire for holiness, passion for righteousness, you switched church. And you came over here. You know what? The God of heaven will make you holy. The Lord will keep you holy in Jesus' name. It's not only holiness, we love prayer too. We pray here too. And if you came early today, you know we love the Lord. And we know that without God, we can do nothing. We spent quality time. We sang and then we pray. We fell on our faces and we pray. And it's not business as usual. When service is in the middle, we pray. When service is over, you know, there are places whereby the pastor is done ministering. All that the congregation does is what? They just jam their hands together. They clap. They are happy. They have been entertained. Over here, when you finish, when we finish ministry, what do you do? Pray. You pray. You pray. So, if you are look for, looking for a praying church, this is a praying church. Passion for growing grace. Passion for growing grace. When it is there, and you, you know what you are looking for. You know what you are looking for, and the Lord will give it unto you in Jesus' name. And the grace to serve the Lord is also there. You know, there are some people that they don't care about the work of God. They handle it haphazardly. They handle it as if God is blind, as if God does not see. And as if God does not reward them that diligently seek him, if that is your goal, you will mimic them. You will imitate them. After all, A is not serious. After all, B is not serious. Why should I it be me alone. It better be you alone. Look, open your eyes and look for people that are serious for God, serious with God, daily making sacrifices for the glory of the name of the Lord and the expansion and the building of the kingdom of God and pattern your life after them. You don't want to follow or mimic grumblers and murmurers and complainers in the church the grace to grow the Lord will give unto you in Jesus name Titus chapter 2 verse 1 but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men be sober grave, temperate sound in faith in charity in patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Not women that are talkatives. Not women that are, are dividers and destroyers. No, but women. Women that behave in holiness. Not false accusers. Not giving to wine. Teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, 
young men likewise. Exhort to be sober-minded, not worldly-minded, not haughty-minded. Exhort to be, uh, to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself. Tell me what follow. Can you say it again? A pattern of good works. A pattern of good works. A pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned. I need an amen. amen. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed. Have you no evil thing to say of you? Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not rebelling, not disobedient, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the Doctrine of our of God, our Savior in all things. Verse 11. Everybody? Verse 12. Say that again. Verse 12. One more time. Teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly loss. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? In this present world. We'll continue the reading. That verse tells us that we should deny ungodly and worldly laws. Worldly laws. Worldly laws. Look at the dressings of this age. Worldly laws. Look at the languages of this age. Worldly laws. Look at the behaviors, conduct, and character of this age. Worldly laws uh, that we deny ungodliness. Anything that is not godly. Anything that is not God glorifying. And that we should live soberly. Soberly. Your comportment. Soberly. Your department. Soberly. Your appearance, soberly. Your communication, soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Verse 13, everybody, looking for that blessed hope. You will get it. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might do what? Redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself who a peculiar people zealous of good works. That will be your portion. That will be my portion. In the name of Jesus. Now to you the believer. Now to you this, uh, the, the minister. The preacher of the world. Verse 15 says these things speak and exhort, and rebuke, with what? With all authority. Let no man despise thee. Churches today does not want you to rebuke anybody, correct anybody, does everybody just do anything. If you love me the way I am, that is who I am. No. The Bible say, speak, exhort, rebuke and do that with all authority the grace to do it god will give unto us in jesus name Amen. spiritual growth begins the very moment a sinner becomes born again that is when you come alive in christ jesus remember every living living thing does what every living thing grow and so, once you get born again, you come alive in Jesus, and your growth begins from there. First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all malice. If you are there, you still have malice against anyone. People you won't talk to. People you won't talk with. And the devil will give you a million reasons why you should keep malice. 
why you should cut off yourself from them. That is not the spirit of God for a born again child of God. It's an indication that the old nature, the old life, the old spirit is still there in you, controlling you, directing you. And remember, I told you, every human being is under the control of one out of two spirits. Which tell me the first one? Okay. Let's say the positive one together. What's the first one? The Holy Spirit. What's the second one? An evil spirit, whichever one is controlling you, is what you will manifest. I pray you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. We have fallen aside all malice. Not some of them. Not many of them. How many of them? All malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the sincere make of the world that ye may grow thereby. Here we see that once a child of God is born again, saved, the hunger, the task, the desire for better life comes and it will come unto you in Jesus' name. Because just like that little child wants to be like the father, wants to be like the mother, so also a born again child of God wants to be like his master, Jesus Christ. And we will be in Jesus' name. What are the areas of our life that we should passionately desire for growth? By the grace of God. Number one, the Bible says in 4 Peter chapter, chapter 3 verse 8, grow in grace. Grow in grace. What kind of grace? The grace for holy living. The grace for righteous living. The grace for love of the brethren. The grace for love of God. The grace for humility. The grace for gentleness. The grace for meekness. The grace to serve God unto acceptability. It says, but grow in grace. Grow in grace. So number one, we grow in grace. Number two, we grow in the knowledge of Christ. Knowledge of Christ. A lot of people go to church. They don't read the Bible for themselves. They only let other people read the Bible for them. And they don't know what really they are doing so the knowledge of Christ look at it again but growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the knowledge of his person the knowledge of his deity the knowledge of his virgin birth the knowledge of the purpose of him coming to the world the knowledge of the power of God in him the knowledge of what he can do in you and through you the knowledge of his name the knowledge of the Godhead in him knowledge of Christ number three we grow up into Christ in all things we grow into Christ in all things. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Number four, we grow up in faith. We grow up in faith. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you. Others will bless God for you. Brethren, as it is me, because that your faith, your faith, your faith abounds, uh, excuse me, Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet. Because that your faith great exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you up towards each other abounded. So we grow in faith. We grow also in the spreading of the word of God. Spreading of the word of God. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 19, verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It will prevail at our time. It will prevail against all false doctrines and teachings in Jesus' name. Then we grow in wisdom. We grow in wisdom. 
This is why we should be passionate about all these. We grow in wisdom. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And the child grew. And you will grow. And the child grew. And worked strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Can you see? The wisdom and the grace. They still come together. We grow in spiritual service. Serving the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, you will not labor in vain. We grow in the gift of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit. As you do the work of God, you need the gift of the Spirit to be able to succeed in it at every level. And then, as you look at that, we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To, uh, 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 to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So then we see the need for us to grow in these spirits of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, the gift of the Spirit. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. Even ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Somebody here today will ask. And somebody today will receive. In the name of Jesus. We grow also in the fruit of the Spirit. We don't just go in the gift of the Spirit. Actually, we grow in the fruit of the Spirit before the gift of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit according to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. If you please quickly open your Bible there. And then you see, of course, from verse 19, it tells us about the works of the flesh. But that is not our dwelling place. We are promoted. I said we are promoted. And we are moving forward in Jesus' name. So, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22. It says, the Fruits of the Spirit are these. What are they? Let's begin to read. What are they? Thank you so much. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now look at verse 24. And they that are Christ, and they that are born again, and they that are redeemed, have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. We also grow into maturity. We grow into maturity. Every child, you saw that child five years ago, five years after, the child has grown. Under five years, the child is grown. Before you know it, that child, if he's a boy, is already growing beers. Amen? And if he's a lady, you see other parts of the body already changing. So we grow into maturity. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Know your calling. 
no your gift, no the grace of God upon your life, we grow into understanding the word of God. Understanding the word of God. You know, the boy Samuel, today, I'm baffled, I'm surprised, that when you call young people, they don't know the word of God anymore. All the, they can sing, they can do activity, but the word of God that can help them to grow, they don't know it anymore. I can tell you many years back, as a teenager, a teenager, I wasn't even born again then. The church I was going was to go into competition with some other churches in the city. Big churches, small churches, all of them. And then myself and another young man, another teenager, were appointed by our church to go represent the church at that competition. And everything was based on the book of Daniel. And Daniel is one of the most, one of the most difficult books of the Bible. You know that? That requires interpretation and everything. And because so many churches were involved, they made it as tough and difficult as possible, at least to narrow down as those that are going to be able to win and to God's glory with the knowledge and the understanding of the word of God. We, myself, and my partner, we came first in that competition. The word of God. The word of God. And that is why I was trying to tell you earlier on, after I gave my life to Christ, and then I saw this one able to teach, able to preach, able to do this, I knew the first thing I needed is the word of God. The word of God. If you see me here, this Bible I'm using, of course, not this particular one, big annotated reference Bible, I bought it almost as soon as I gave my life to Christ in 1981. And I, if you see, a few days ago, a few days ago, I was searching through my books, and then that same Bible then, I say, found it. I say, have it. It's so old. If I bring it here now, some doors from it will be coming to your nose. Praise the Lord. But and then you see all the markings, you see everything there, and then I didn't do that. There is another one then that was popular, Thompson Chain Reference Bible. This is a study Bible, and I wasn't a worker in the church. No, but the desire to grow, I didn't know that God is going to build me up and make me to be who I am today and where I am today. Begin to develop yourself. I said begin to develop yourself. Begin to build up yourself and the Lord will build you up in Jesus' name. Within two years of coming to the church, the church made me to be a leader in the church. And before you know it, at some point, the church say, help us with the youth and they help us with the adult. I was uh, doing a combo, combo service together. And some of you have been in the church for five years, for seven years. Where is the grace of God upon your life? That grace is coming. In the name of Jesus, you grow in the understanding of the word of God. What I mean by this is Samuel, a young child, from the age of about three, was sent to Eli. And that young man consecrated himself, consecrated his life, even as a child. And God saw so much in that child that was not seen in the life of the children of Eli. At one point, God needed to send a message. God, when God is looking for a man to send, he will find you. When God is looking for a woman to speak his mind unto, he will find you in Jesus' name. What shall he profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Samuel was called by God. He never heard the voice of God before. Samuel, Samuel, the only voice he has always heard before that time was the voice of Eli. And so he thought it was my master Eli that was calling, my spiritual father Eli that was calling. He got up, he ran to Eli. When your leader calls, what do you do? 
You avoid the call. You ignore the call. You pretend as if you don't see. You never can tell. It may be called to higher ground. And somebody here will go to higher ground. And so Samuel got up, ran to Eli. Here am I. You called me. And Eli said, no, I didn't call you. And then he went back to sleep because it was in the night. And then Samuel, Samuel, he jumped up again, went to Eli. Sir, you called me. And then Eli perceived God is calling. Listen to this. There are some of you that by the grace of God, your leaders have perceived the grace of God upon your life. The call of God upon your life. That call, you will not miss it. And so Eli said, oh, it's like God is trying to get this young man's attention. When he calls you, say to him, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Eventually, Samuel knew the voice of God. You will know the voice of God. In the name of Jesus. I get to the second point. Persistent grace for growth. Persistent grace. Now, the grace of God is not something that is limited. It's something that is always there. It's something that is continuous. And it's something you have to desire from time to time. You have to persist in it. You have to concentrate for it. You have to de uh, 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 dedicate yourself and your life for it. Uh, and then you will see what is going to happen. Growth is the aftermath of consistent, meaningful effort. Growth is the result of the investment you have wisely made. Growth is accomplished by relentless exercises and sacrifices. It takes exercise. It takes sacrifice for you to be able to say, here am I. It is through sowing and tending to the plants that we can see the fruit of what we have sowed. It does not come coincidentally. It does not come accidentally. It is by work. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. National leaders of every nation desires to see their nation grow economically, socially, militarily, politically. Business owners will not give sleep to their eyes until they see their business grow. Not that alone. Churches today are into competition in their quest to outnumber one another in the area of growth. Unfortunately, most of the churches are concentrating on numbers, numerical growth alone, at the expense of spiritual growth. But God is more interested in your growing up spiritually than how many people are in the church. Am I communicating? If you are looking for crowd, there are many places with crowd. But where is the lie? It is wanting to be a pastor over 10,000 souls. Where not 100 will be able to make it to heaven. It's also supposed to be a pastor over 100 souls, out of which 90 of them will make it to heaven. Who has the bigger church in heaven? The one with 100 members. That's why don't kill yourself because of number. I tell myself the same thing. Yes, we want many people in the church by the grace of God. But such people that we want to submit themselves to the will of God. Submit themselves to the word of God. People that want to follow the way of the Lord. We want them and they will come. I said they will come. And those of you that are already here, by the grace of God, you will stay in Jesus' name. You know, when people come, some things happen sometimes that we test them. Why are you here? What are you here for? Are you only here for recognition? Are you here only here because of position? Are you here because of title? Some things will happen. And through whatsoever happens, then we're able to know where you stand. Because the test will come. But after your testing, your promotion will come. In the name of Jesus. 
And so, understand, when we talk about growth, it means increase. You are increasing spiritually. You are increasing physically. You are increasing in the things of the Lord. Growth means expansion. It means to advance. And then, the means of spiritual growth is through assiduous, diligent, persevering, attentive, tireless, studying of the word of God. Not that alone. It is true, deliberate, uh, effective, quiet time. That is prayer, personal time with God. When I say quiet time, please understand. It's one thing for you to have your devotion in the family. It's one thing for you to have prayer together with other people in the church. What is your personal relationship with God? Personal, personal, effective one. How do you pray? How often do you pray? For how long do you pray? The spirit of prayer will come upon us. I said the spirit of prayer will come upon us. In the name of Jesus, spiritual growth comes through our devotion to the service of the Lord. When you are devoted to something, you consecrate yourself for that thing. You consecrate your life for that thing. Nobody pushes you. Nobody forces you. Nobody compels you because you have the vision for it. You have also, you grow also through unalloyed commitment to fellowship of the saints. Fellowship of the saints. There are people, they come to church, but their confidence are unbelievers out there. They come to church, but their confidence are their colleagues at war. It is what you sow that you will reap. But the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. We only will grow by completely and totally dedicating ourselves to the Lord and separating ourselves from the world. What has righteousness to do with unrighteousness? What has the temple of God to do with the temple of Satan? The Lord will help us. The Lord will keep us. And when that happens, understand, we will grow in the word of God. We will grow with the people of God. We will grow in the grace of God. We will grow through the blood of Jesus. We will grow by the spirit of the living God in Jesus' name. As newborn babes, 4 Peter 2.2. 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world of the world. And when we are persistent in this grace for growth, look at what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 27 verse 6 says, he shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. You will take root. I said you will take root. Israel shall blossom and ball. Your life will blossom and ball. And fill the face of the earth with fruit in Jesus' name your fruit will abide. Finally, the product of growing grace. The product of growing grace. Isaiah 37 verse 31. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah, the remnant that is escaped from the pollutions of the world, the remnant that is delivered by the power of the Lord, shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward in the name of Jesus. Again, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. When you are growing in grace, you will have a daily spiritual freshness. When you are growing in grace, you will have a daily victorious living when you're growing in grace, you will live a pure life that is above reproach. When you're growing in grace, you will live a consistent Christian life. When you're growing in grace, you'll be daily ready for the coming of the Savior, the coming of the Lord. When you're growing in grace, you grow up into Christ. And then the Lord will endow you with wisdom, with knowledge, and with understanding in all areas of life, the grace to grow. For the grace of God, 
that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Let us pray. The grace has appeared unto all men. You need the grace to be better prepared for the new year coming. You need the grace to be a better Christian. The grace to be free from sin, from self, from the society. You need that grace. You need that grace. And the grace is there. It's available. The grace will keep you. The grace will hold you. In the name of Jesus.